any best of list is going to be totally subjective by nature, but no one ever clicks on titles like five really good JRPGs that I personally enjoy and here's some well-structured reasons why. Instead, you engage the audience with an absolute statement and they click to find out what you think the best games are so that they can argue why you're fucking stupid or get the warm fuzzies because you just happen to love the same games that they do. And really, that's clickbaiting in a nutshell. So, because I'm no better than the rest of the internet, here's my list for the five best JRPGs for total noobs. But first, some backstory. There's an article from Techno Buffalo making the social media rounds entitled The Five Best JRPGs for Beginners. And while I don't necessarily disagree with any of the titles they picked, it does bother me immensely that they listed four games developed by Square and threw in a token suggestion from Enix, which is not technically one company nowadays anyway. Someone who's new to the genre is a complete blank slate. You think they suggest a larger variety of games to try. There are enough gamers out there as it is that never branch out beyond Final Fantasy. So I'm setting some ground rules for my list. Rule number one, only one game per developer. If someone new to the genre is turned off by one developer's style, it makes little sense to keep suggesting more of the same. Rule number two, traditional RPGs only. So expect a plethora of turn-based menu battles here. Branching out into alternate battle styles is a rabbit hole we don't need to explore. I could easily devote an entire list to strategy RPGs alone, but that would give new players an accurate representation of the standard seasoned gamers are already familiar with. Rule number three, the game should be funny. There's probably a time and place for overly serious RPGs with deep moral implications and philosophical ponderings, but sure as hell ain't here. The most beloved games of the genre keep us laughing even when the world is falling apart around us. Rule number four, the storyline should be an epic adventure. This list is all about celebrating the tried and true JRPG tropes and cliches. One constant between all these titles is a world-spanning adventure which may or may not involve airships and fire dungeons. You wouldn't want your first taste of the genre to be totally unlike any other experience you'll ever have. Rule number five, the characters should be memorable. If the game doesn't have you itching to draw some fan art like an obsessed 12 year old, then it doesn't deserve to be on this list. The characters should feel human with real emotions and dilemmas. By the end of the game, the player should feel attached to the characters they just spent 60 hours adventuring with. But what was the whole point? Now, with that out of the way, onto the list. Dragon Quest VIII, developed by Level 5 for Square Enix, is obviously the eighth installment of a very long-running series. That's not to say Dragon Quest VIII is necessarily the best Dragon Quest game out there, but I think it's the most accessible to new players. The gorgeous cel-shaded visuals and orchestrated music provide plenty of candy for the eyes and ears. The main storyline is exciting enough, but long after you've forgotten who the Cursed King was and where he was going, you'll still be picturing Yangus performing the underpants dance. The game introduces you to the basics of turn-based combat while staying fun and silly with some highly entertaining animations. There's also plenty to do for those OCD completionist gamers with a ton of optional side quests like gambling, recruiting monsters for your monster squad, crafting recipes in your alchemy pot, and collecting mini medals hidden throughout the world. Plus, once the journey's over, you can keep coming back to beat the crap out of an optional boss to unlock some pretty cool bragging rights and bitch in armor. Is Dragon Quest VIII the best RPG ever made? Hell, I don't know but exemplifies everything that's fun about the genre. Skies of Arcadia Sega's never been very prolific with their RPGs, but when they do release one, you can expect the experience to be nothing short of amazing, and this is certainly no exception. From beginning to end, Skies is a fun cinematic adventure complete with air pirates, larger than life titans, and a long lost civilization. Maybe it's coincidence, but I think someone at Sega was writing an interactive love letter to Hayao Miyazaki. Anyway, for the most part, Skies is a very traditional RPG. Battles are again turn-based, and characters unlock powerful skills which use up valuable resources allotted to the team each turn. There's an element of strategy involved with deciding when to go all out on attack and when to conserve energy in the here and now for a harder hitting payoff later. But the real charm lies with the game's epic sized ship battles. Your team will go bout to bout against other flying aircrafts and against the aforementioned monstrous titans. Despite the game's lack of voice acting, the characters, heroes and villains alike, manage to extrude a ton of personality through their facial expressions. Forget the days of 16-bit sprites wriggling around a screen, Vice, Fina, and Aika act out a whole range of emotions which only enhance the movie-like quality of the game. Lunar's been remade on a number of different platforms, but the version I'm specifically recommending is Silver Star Story Complete for the PS1. I personally feel that this version has the best blend of storyline and localization, 
but since working designs tends to elicit a love-hate response, the PSP version is also very good if you prefer your games to be serious over slightly silly. There is little reason to play the Sega CD original besides nostalgia, which new RPG gamers won't have, and the GBA's Lunar Legends was just bad. Painfully bad. Avoid completely. Trust me. That said, Lunar is the perfect example of every RPG. A hero and his band of friends embark on a mission across the known world to save it and the girl he loves. Despite the seriousness of this task, the game is utterly hilarious. The banter between friends is really what keeps the player going throughout the adventure. Although, the studio quality animated cutscenes don't hurt. Random battles, although common to the genre, are an exercise in frustration, and probably one of the surest things to turn off new players. Lunar does away with this convention and instead allows you to see the enemies and potentially avoid them before you trigger a battle. I don't know if this actually cuts down the number of encounters you'll fight, but it feels better, especially when you're just desperately trying to reach an exit. Also, there's Galleon, one of the best non-player characters ever written. If you can't find something to love about Lunar, you simply have no heart. Chrono Trigger No JRPG list would be complete without a 16-bit entry from Squaresoft. Many fans fondly remember the 90s as the glory days of the genre, and picking a beginner's first RPG from their massive library was no easy task. But I feel that Chrono Trigger represents everything that's great about the genre. It's fucking gorgeous, and manages to hold up just as well today as it did in 1995. I've always been a sucker for time-traveling storylines, and for good reason. It's just a lot of fun jumping back and forth between wildly different eras. One plot point might have you taking down massive dinosaurs to aid a band of prehistoric nomads, and the next battling futuristic robots in a dystopian society. There's never a moment of downtime as your party frantically fights their way to the end of time to undo the world's complete annihilation. But hey, no pressure. You have all the time in the world to play minigames, seek out epic gear, and complete character backstory quests. Like Lunar, Chrono Trigger does away with random battles, plus it rectifies the monotony of the menu-based battle system by incorporating a totally optional action bar. As time passes, this bar fills up and players and monsters alike can react. Even if you're casually navigating the spell list, a monster can and will interrupt your turn. It may not always feel strategic, but it adds a flair twitch gaming to an otherwise thinking man's genre. Breath of Fire 3 in the days before Capcom was a one-trick street-fighting pony, they were churning out great games from just about every genre, and RPGs were certainly not excluded. Capcom knew that deep down, all JRPG gamers secretly wanted to morph into dragons and roast their enemies to a crisp, and so they delivered one great Breath of Fire game after another. Like many of the titles on this list, Breath of Fire 3 is ultimately a game about friendship, and all the ups and downs that come with it. The ending may turn out to be bittersweet, but the journey is so much more important than the destination. Also, just look at it, the game's fucking pretty. Breath of Fire 3 also introduces an important gameplay element that's pretty common to the genre, environmental puzzles. Every so often, you'll be exploring a dungeon, kicking ass and making good time, when you'll run into a room full of shipping containers that just so happen to conveniently block your path to the other side of the room. Different party members have special abilities, and you'll have to use the correct character to advance the game. It's a nice diversion to the monotony of dungeon crawling, and you'll welcome the much-needed break from those pesky random battles. And that's my list. So, are these five games the greatest JRPGs ever released? Probably not, but they're all great games, and really, that's what you want your first experience with the genre to be. Just immersing yourself in a solid game that grabs your attention from beginning to end and stays with you years after you've put down the controller. That said, I'm willing to bet that if you're going to enjoy JRPGs at all, then you'll find something in this list to love. But hey, maybe you've got some great ideas of your own. Post your top five lists in the comments below. Daria out. And once again, thank you for watching.